The date is March the 9th, 2005. I am the, at the home of Mary M. Moran, uh, who was a captain in the United States Air Force Nurses Corps. Uh, we are at her home at 33 Hamlin Drive, Green Hills, Ohio. Uh, my name is Margaret Lostro, and I will be doing the interview for the uh, VETS project. Uh, we will be talking to Miss Moran about her experiences during the military, her life, leading up to that time and what she did after she got, was uh, finished with her career in the service. My name is Mary M. Moran, and I was born in Corbin, Kentucky on November the 8th, 1934. I spent most of my childhood in Corbin, Kentucky. In November 1945, my father had a job transfer to Cincinnati, Ohio, and he was, as he was searching for a home, uh, he found one located in Green Hills, Ohio, just outside of Cincinnati. It was a beautiful government-run housing division, just beautiful, beautiful landscaping, barrack-type houses, but it was still beautiful. My first visit to the grocery store in Green Hills was like walking to a magical land. Shelves stocked full, meat counter was unbelievable, things that weren't available during World War II in Kentucky. I attended grades uh, 12, 6 through 12, pardon me, 6 through 12 at school in Green Hills and was active in sports. I lettered in every sport and was president of the Girls Athletic Association. I was also in the Green Hills High School Band, which was a, a wonderful time for me at that time. I would like to mention teachers that made a great difference in my life during my school years. Ms. Faye Perry Lowe, who taught social studies and English and literature, and Dr. James W. Riley, who was our band director. Great human beings. All my life I was interested in the military, was interested in weapons, airplanes, whatever. As a child I had little miniature soldiers that I used to play, uh, make battles with, and had a great deal of fun. So when I graduated from high school in 1952, all I wanted to do was to join the military. However, my father insisted that I learn a profession and enter the service as an officer. A second interest of mine was nursing or medicine, so I decided to enter the Christ Hospital School of Nursing in Cincinnati, Ohio, and become a nurse. That way I could get into the Air Force the way my father suggested. I had met in the past two Navy nurses and an Army nurse, so I kind of knew what I wanted to do with my life. During my three years at Christ Hospital, I had many interesting experiences. I met several Cincinnati Reds baseball team players and National League umpires. At times, the police officers of Cincinnati stopped in during the early morning hours and would have coffee with us and discuss things that were going on in the city. Miss Martha Graff, head nurse in the emergency room, was very strict, but she made a better nurse out of everyone. When working on the hospital wards, like the 11, 3 to 11 shift or the 11 to 7 shift, as student nurses, we were put in charge. A lot of responsibility for young people, but as a Christ Hospital nurse, you knew how to handle it. Highlight of the shift was giving reports to the shift supervisor, Ms. Frances Lampy. You better know what was going on with your patients because Ms. Lampy drilled you about each one. And before the, and before the report, you shook from nerves, and after the report, you either gave a sigh of relief or you were in tears. However, a good nurse she was teaching you to be. Each week, as student nurses, we were taught social graces by serving tea to others in the drawing room of the nursing residence. Then there were also the great sports such as basketball and softball, and we got to play the other nursing schools, which really, we got to meet a lot of different people. Our affiliations with Children's Hospital, Dunham TB Hospital, and Longview, the mental hospital, opened your mind to many fields in the nursing after you left school. After graduating in 1956, I worked in the Christ Hospital emergency room until September 1958, when I was commissioned to, into the USAF 
Nurse Corps Reserves as a second lieutenant. I went in on the buddy system with a fellow student by the name of Iva Stockton. At that time, you could go in with a friend and you, and you would be stationed together at the same base for a while. It was great because if you didn't know anyone and you were going to somewhere that you'd never been before, you had someone to kind of back you up. We were assigned to Gunner Air Force Base on the 22nd of November, 58, in Montgomery, Alabama, for training such as saluting, how to wear the uniform, marching, and classes on protocol. And then a new adventure begins, because from Gunner Air Force Base, we were assigned to Lackland Air Force Base, the US, USAF hospital on 18 December, 58, in San Antonio, Texas. As you can see, I got to spend Thanksgiving away from home in Montgomery, Alabama, and my first Christmas away from home in San Antonio, Texas. Great. I was stationed at Lackland Air Force Base for over two years, was active in dis disaster grills, in-service programs, and worked on the e ear, nose, throat, eye ward, and oral surgery ward. A few times we saw the astronauts come in for their checkups, walking on a red rug. I became interested in horseback riding during this time and rode in several local horse shows. The worldwide military newspaper did an active, uh, pardon me, did an article on my hobby with picture. I visited a Mexi Mexican border town and bought pottery, a Mexican sombrero, a gun belt to hold my pistol, and other small items. The Air Force took care of any of my medical needs as I had two years of orthodontic work done, which was greatly appreciated. In 1962, I was ordered to Peshawar, West Pakistan for a 15-month tour of duty. This is a 15-bed United States Air Force dispensary. And it took us a week to get there. We flew on a C-118, and we got to stop in Bermuda, the Azores, which were beautiful, Madrid, Spain, which was a great place to spend. We, we were there just before Christmas, and everyone seemed to be extremely happy and very loving. We stopped in a bar and watched the flamingo dancers, which was very loud and gave me a headache. When in the military, you have some lonely times when you miss your family, etc. And Peshawar could have been one of those times as I arrived again on Christmas Eve. However, however, I was assigned with a great group of Air Force and Army personnel, and there were few boring moments. I met the British Embassy ladies on Christmas Day as they invited us to dinner which was a typical English dinner with, with the pudding. I accidentally spilled food on my dress, which later I sent to a Pakistani dry cleaner, and believe me, it was smelled terrible. It was clean with kerosene. I had to send it back to the United States for cleaning. Our quarters were very nice, and on the base there was a bakery, which later burned down, a wonderful swimming pool, commissary, officers and NCO clubs, church, barracks, and a, and a post office. And believe me, Mail was extremely important over there, as was the water tower, which rocked when an earthquake happened, and the air conditioners, which ran in the summer when it was 130 degrees. On base, there were deer and hyenas running around at night, and you were always on alert for cobras and scorpions. The base was a security base and radar site, but the military said we should never paying attention to the buildings across the street, and I did just that. I have no idea what went on in those buildings. However, I must admit, being so far away from home, when President Kennedy was assassinated, assassinated, it was a very frightening experience. As we were put on alert, no weapons available, and about a 1,000 miles from the seacoast. Our dispensary took care of many me medical ailments, maternity because dependents were on base, and there was even some school teachers if they had a school for the children. Peace Corps personnel, which mostly came in with hepatitis and other minor ailments. We had several people with heart attacks and minor injuries. At times we had to air back people out to Tripoli, Libya um, for, for extensive medical care, and I had to assist some of those people sometimes. Our off time was spent visiting a leprosy hospital in Karachi, which was was kind of neat because we found out that the people had to live in this village, a leprosy village, because they couldn't give them their medication to take 
you know, several times a day or whatever. They, they, they would take everything at one time. They would take the whole bottle of pills at one time, and they just couldn't allow them to do that. I visited a civilian hospital in Pakistan, and this was unusual, too, because the family stayed with the patient and took care of them. The firewood was placed underneath the bed, and the people cooked their meals outside the room, and they fed and cleaned the patient. The British ran this small hospital unit, and it had very outdated medical equipment, believe me. It was pre-World War I. War I. During the, uh, that time, I also visited the Khyber Pass, and you had to go into tribal territory to visit the, the Khyber Pass. Uh, you had to sign out in a government office, and you had to be in by dark because they couldn't guarantee your safety after dark. Driving up the road to the pass, all along the mountainsides were beautiful plaques with the name of British Army re regiments, etc., uh, who fought there in past history, and many were killed there. The market places in Rishawa, Pakistan, were lined with fruit, vegetables, etc., Beautiful, but you couldn't eat without preventive care. I love Pakistani food, the curry, spicy food, but, but very good. At times we rode bicycles uh, from the base into Brashala and had afternoon tea on the lawn of a hotel. I learned how to throw knives into a target, which amazed the Pakistani men because women just didn't do this. When visiting the Dara gun factory, I watched them make weapons, and I got to shoot a spin gun. I wasn't very good at it. You wouldn't dare use our ammunition in, in a Pakistani rifle because they made it from soft metal, and, our, and probably our ammunition would explode the gun. I played softball, a co-ed softball game with the Army against the Pakistani Army, and we stopped in the seventh inning to have tea. We weren't very good, and they were very good because they beat us. Wonderful experiences, truly. I was promoted to captain during my tour of duty there on, in October 63. When I took leave, I visited New Delhi, India, and I got to go to Agra to see the Taj Mahal. A beautiful building, beautiful landscaping. Then on to Thailand and to Bangkok, and there we saw palaces, golden Buddhas, the reclining Buddhas, we got to shop in their stores, which I bought a opal ring, a black star sapphire ring. I love Thailand because the people there were so happy and they were friendly to us. I bought Thai silk, and I, later on I had a dress made from that. After Thailand, it was on to Hong Kong. I got to see the fence that separated China from Kowloon and the armed guards at the fence. I purchased a military mess dress uniform there, custom made, and a few linens in Hong Kong. We, my friend and I, when we took this trip, we had the same color suitcases, so I put a red ribbon on my suitcase so we could tell the difference. However, it didn't work when you went through customs because they always checked my bag. Then it was back to Peshawar. In 1964, I was ordered back to Lackland Air Force Base to Wilford Hall USAF Hospital. I worked on a surgical ward for several mo months, and then I was made night supervisor of this 1,000-bed one hospital. I loved every minute of this responsibility. Aravac planes came in. I had to see that the patient got to the right ward, that their family was provided with quarters and transportation, and that everyone was fed. A lot of responsibility. I continued my hobby of riding horses in my off time. About a year later, I was given the job of being a head nurse in the outpatient clinics and the immunization clinic at Wilford Hall. And on March the 1st, 1966, I decided to go home, to, back to civilian life, at uh, the insistence of my parents, who felt that it was time for me to come home. And it was extremely difficult to adjust back to civilian life. I worked at the Cincinnati Vet Vet Veterinarians Administration Hospital in the medical intensive care for six months, and that was such a stressful job that I left. Finally, I got a job with the Procter & Gamble Company as an occupational health nurse at a site with over 1,000 employees. Treated many illnesses and injuries, took many classes and 
pulmonary function testing, audiograms, uh, electrocardiograms, a physical assessment, etc. A great place to work. I stayed with Procter & Gamble until I retired in February of 97. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. It was very interesting. One question. Uh, did you ever take care of uh, wounded uh, veterans? When I was at Lackland, there was a couple of uh, pilots that came in with burns, um, and uh, one was wounded in the back from Vietnam, but that was the only wounded mm -hmm. I actually saw. Mm -hmm. At veterans, was there any aftercare on some of the veterans? I worked in the intensive care unit. I, oh, I really okay. don't. Mm -hmm. And most of those people were retired mm -hmm. alcoholics, heart attacks, diabetics, things like that. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add about your time? The Air Force is a wonderful experience for any young girl to go into as a nurse. I would recommend it to anybody. It was a great time, a great learning experience. You met many different people and saw many different cultures. It was just wonderful. Then I thank the United States Air Force for my opportunity. Thank you very much, and uh, I appreciate the time you have given me and uh, all the uh, great information. So uh, on that note, I think we will sign off. <laughs>